Hello, Jim Hodges here, Cash here. Cash is a black German Shepherd, medium coat, almost a year old. He came to us for our residency program. He's uh, really a happy guy. He's very hyper. He's got a lot of drive. That's part of a working instinct in German Shepherds. He gets excited. He's got a strong prey drive. I don't know if you're watching his eyes, but we have cats around. He's going to watch those cats. We just can't allow him to act out on that prey behavior, okay? So, and it can be done. It's just a matter of managing. It's a, manage, a matter of being in control in all situations. My shepherds are also highly prey driven. They watch the cats, but they know better than to act on them because I'm their leader and I'm willing to call them out on it if I think they're getting too far along. By doing that, by being consistent, it's not something that you truly have to worry about, at least with your own cats. Uh, next door cats, if there's a problem, you would be working him around those as well. As I said, he's highly energetic. Uh, he's got a strong work drive. It's important that when we ask him to do something, he does it. But we're very positive with it. We listen to my voice when we go through the obedience. We want to motivate him with our voice, try to encourage him to do the things that he needs to do. When he does it, we want to praise him. You're going to see me bring a treat out in my pocket here in a minute. I use it all the time for the recall commands. Heck, I may even use a, a treat for regular obedience. It really depends on the dog. I'm more likely to use a treat on the recall command and teaching new things than to give Cash a treat every time he does something. I'm normally going to praise him. And when I praise him, it's words and touch. Sometimes the toy and treat, but always words and touch when we can do it, okay? So we're going to start working our obedience listen to my tone, watch my actions, and take that with you. As you know, and, and clients that I have worked with in the past knows, that this is really a guide just to show you on how to act in the obedience. It goes much deeper than this. This is why we work together two or three times before they go home, is so that you get a, a look inside what makes him tick, and we get a look inside you on what makes you tick and meld the two together, okay? So, you ready, Cash? Let's go. So when we are walking on a leash, this was something he was really doing bad for was pulling. He walks like, good boy, see how he looked at me? Whenever he looks at us, we want to try to reward him with that. We walk on a loose leash now, he's got to walk beside us. He can't pull and get out in front of us, okay? If he started to pull and get out front, we would, let me get the camera, we would tap back. No, let's go, okay? And then when he's back to walking, good boy, we want to praise him. We're not constantly talking to him, unless you're one of those kind of people, but we're letting him know that he's being good when we ask him to be good. If he started to go that way, or if I turned right and he was looking that way, I would be tapping the leash in the direction that I want him to go in. The only thing that I would do if, a, if you have a dog at home and he's lagging behind, I wouldn't try to tap him up, I would try to motivate him up. Try to pretend like you're going to start to run or tap your sides, and then as soon as he starts to move with us, it's a good boy. So, let's go. I have a cat coming up up here. Let's see what happens. Good boy. Turn. Turn. That's good. you got to watch me. Sit. Did real good. Sit. When I gave him the hand signal for sit, means to sit. He's got to sit and stay there no matter what I do. He's in the sit until I release him. If he does not sit or if he pops out of the sit, I'm going to take the leash and pop straight up above his head and tell him, no, sit, and then praise on the back end again. Break. Break is the release command. So when I tell him to sit and I praise after a bite, anytime we have to provide our dog a consequence, we don't just leave it in that state of the consequence. Whenever they do what we want on the back end, we always come back and praise, okay? Good boy. See how he's watching me? a boy. So, break, sit. Good boy. And he has to hold the sit. Now, break. With a lot of dogs, your dog may be willing to sit for hours, but as a rule, I don't like to put a dog into a sit for more than 15 seconds to a minute or two, especially big bone dogs, I don't like to put that pressure on their rear end. I'll leave that for you to decide what you should do with him. I wouldn't do that with Cash, for example. Maybe a minute, that's about it. 
The other thing with a hyper dog, a high energy dog, it's important that we work slowly and patiently. We hang on the commands. We don't get in a hurry going, sit down, sit down. Nice and slow. Give him a chance to channel his energy to your energy and listen. The other thing with the high energy dog, it's important that we stay controlled. We can't get angry at him. When we get angry, our emotions get lost that way. He revs up and then we're just asking for more and more mistakes. So if we're going to have energy like that and enthusiasm and emotion, we want it positive to uh, encourage him to what we want to do, to let him know he's done what we want. But if he's done something wrong, it's just uh, nah, and then good boy after he does what we ask. Let's go. Sit. Good. So he has to hold the sit. So the next thing I'm going to do is, since we're in this position, is I'm going to do the come command. There's two types of come command. There's the on leash and the off leash. The off leash come command for you guys out there that aren't doing obedience, break. All right, you noticed I didn't want him to stay there too long, so I released him. He stayed in the sit. I don't care. But for those of you that don't have a dog or have a dog that are not using a trainer, what we want to do with the come command off leash is we never ask him to come when they're out running in the yard. We always get their attention first have a bribe, a toy, ourselves, positive encouragement, and get their attention. And then when they start to come, and they're committed to coming to us, that's when we give them the command word, like come, or here, or whatever the case may be. They finish out the command, they sit, we give them a treat, we praise them and love them all at the same time. So on leash, I can tell him to come anytime. If he doesn't do it, what am I gonna do? I'm going to tap the leash in my direction, okay, and have him start to come, okay? So, and then when he comes, he's got to sit. And I am not going to give him a treat unless he does it. And I'm not going to broadcast I have a treat in my hand like I'm doing right this minute. So we're going to move off of this, and I'm going to come back and do the come again in a minute. I want him encouraged to do the come. Now, I'm going to take that back. We would broadcast the treat if we're teaching. We want to encourage it. So I will do it. Come. He comes, he sits, the treat's behind my fingers. He sat, atta boy. I turn around and give him the treat, tell him, atta good boy, and pet him and love him at the same time. I'm gonna do it again a little bit later and I'm not gonna broadcast it. So now we have the come command. If he doesn't come, it's a tap. If he comes to us and doesn't sit, it's a no sit command, and he has to hold that until I release it. Let's go. Good boy. So the next thing is the D-O-W-N command. We can do that from the side. There's two different hand signals from the side and from in front. There's also a command that we're going to talk about called the stay command. But let's do the down first. Sit. Hand signal from in front. Down. Notice he was going down with the hand signal. If he did not down then, I would step in. I would go, no. Down, good boy, and I would step right back out to where I was, okay? It's important that all of our commands, everything we do is on a loose leash, okay? If it's tight, we're controlling what he's doing, he knows what we're doing, and he doesn't have to pay the attention that uh, he should be doing, okay? So, uh, come. Good, good boy. So there was to the come out of the uh, sit. Break. Down. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Down. Hand signal from the side. Down. Good boy. I'm proud of you. Down meets down. Now, if you've got a pretty strong-willed dog, and really for any dog, I would get the point in the beginning to give them a stay command. Stay command is great for down, not so much for sit. It's also great for doorways. But when I tell him to stay, he can now smell the ground, he can roll over, he can chew on something, but he has to hold that down. I tell people, you can pack in his bags, he's gonna be there for a while. Why do we wanna do a down stay in the beginning? It helps teach a dog, even the regular down, helps teach a dog that we're in control. A dog is at its uh, most submissive when we tell it to down and it doesn't. That's why so many people have problems with down to begin with, okay? 
Good boy. Sit. Notice the tone of my voice to get him back up into that sit. That's a good boy. So next is the heel command. The heel command is, is a uh, exaggerated or a much more controlled version of the let's go. It's still a short leash, but we're going to walk. He's going to be beside us. It's our job to keep him beside us. And then when we stop, he's going to sit automatically, okay? So if he started to go in front in the heel, we would do the same as let's go, a tap back. If he started to move out, we would tap him. Our job is to tap him into that box and tell him when he's in that box that he's a good boy. We, as a rule, especially in the beginning, we never tell him to sit if we're running or we don't have him in a heel when we're running and do a jump stop. Because if we stop, we know we're going to stop. He does it, he may overshoot it. We want to teach him so much to be paying attention to us and watch what we do. So here we go. Heel. Hand signal like that. He's right there with me. Straight away. And a boy. And then I can step off and he holds it. One more time. Heel. I step to the side. See how he came right back into the box? Good boy. Let's go. Step off again. Good. Now we're going to do the other side where he's got to speed up. Now he'll. Ah, a boy. Notice when we were going that way, he was falling behind. We have to encourage him to get up. Why? Because he's got further to go than we do. It's a lot easier for him to stay by our side when we turn in, but turning out, we have to encourage him to work on it. Very good boy. Now he's in a sit because at the end of the hill, he has to sit. Right. Good. The next command, come on, man. Okay, what? Well, let's do the, uh, the load up command. The load up is great for if you want your dog on the furniture, but primarily it's great to teach him to climb up on something, to get into a car and things like that. I point at it, I try to motivate him, we'll see what goes. I never let a dog load up until I tell him to load up. We don't want them to just run and, and hop in because we may not be ready for that. Okay, buddy, let's go. Up. Come on. Ah, we missed it. We're going to come back and do it. Good boy, come on. Up. Ah, boy, good boy. Great. So you get ready to find out another rule. Come on, up. Good. Anytime, break. Right. Anytime we're teaching our dog something, you notice I didn't get angry or anything along those lines, but when he messes up on something, we want to take the time right then to go back and do it over correctly. Twice, at least two times, maybe three times in a row. That's why I repeated it. He came up and stepped over. One of the things about our stump is it's getting smaller and smaller with years. We're going to have to find a different way to load him up going forward. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Kitty cat in the background. No, right, let's go. Good. Next one is the place command. Good boy. You notice how he was ready to go get on the place. The place is a command where he can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does as long as he stays on that bed. He can sit. He can down. I don't care. He's in place. I will not tell him to sit or down at this moment, okay? He's there. He can do this for a couple hours at a time if he wants. We have a new cat out that is really running around and going crazy. Got his attention, but he's holding the place. It's remarkable once we start teaching the boundaries. It's always good anytime you start training to begin with little distraction and start to progress through distraction as your dog gets to the point he needs to do what he needs to do. He's there. As I said, we can put him in a place for a couple hours at a time and he'll hold it. I'll give him a phone, I'll give him a toy. I don't mind what he has, I just want him there. It's a good way for owners to have downtime in the evenings or whenever when you want your dog to obey, but you don't want to have to actively make him obey. So say for example, I had him in a place command and I got up and walked in the kitchen. If he got up, I would go, we always start with the leash. I would pick up the leash and take him. No, directional, you remember on let's go and the heel. No, 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 place. Good boy. 
and then I'd go right back to the kitchen. A dog has to learn that they cannot break a command and gain an advantage. So anytime our dog appears to do that, we always put them back where they were and we go back to what we were doing. Okay? Good boy. I'm proud of it. So I think that pretty well summarizes what any dog can do with a little bit of consistency. I believe dogs learn in the physical world before the verbal world. That's why so many times people will have a dog and when they first get him, no or no, and things like that gets the dog's attention. But if you don't follow that up with a bite, I like to call it a physical touch, at some point in time, no go one, goes in one ear and out the other. That's why we're physical first. When I tap this leash, I like to think in my heart that I'm biting him like another dog would. So if I just sit here and tap, he's not going to get worried about it. Heck, whenever I tell him no, he's not going to get worried about it. But just tapping him, he thinks it's part of everyday life. But if I told him no and tap, he knows there's something he did wrong. Okay? I thank you so much. You know, Jim Hodges, Jim Hodges Dog Training. My number is 336-945-3232. You can find me, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. You can find me on Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training. Heck, you can even find me on Amazon, Jim Hodges Dog Training because I have products that I use with my clients and, and for myself there that I truly believe in. Thank you so much. Call me if you need me. Take care. All right. Good boy.